Hey everybody, Michael Mowbray here. I've had a lot of interest in people wanting to know how I do my headshots and I've shown a, a few demonstrations on how I light them and all that kind of stuff, the equipment I use. Haven't done a live shoot yet, but um, let me show you how I, how I process and finish headshots. This is one I photographed yesterday and uh, have it imported into Lightroom. The first thing I'm gonna show you is I have presets for just about every kind of shoot that I do. And in the studio, I have it based on the, uh, the equipment that I use, the modifiers I use, because I'll tell you one thing, and I've said this before, every manufacturer of modifiers has a different color to them, meaning the fabric they use um, will give you a little different color balance. I, I know, for a, example, my GOMO softboxes tend to shoot a little bluer than like a Westcott softbox. And that's on purpose. The GOMO soft boxes are really made to be location boxes. They work great in the studio, but the intent behind them was that they're very portable studio style boxes that you can take on location. Quite often you're working outside in the shade where it's bluer and um, to have some uh, soft box that, that's very warm and very different, uh, hugely different from the ambient light can be jarring sometimes. So we purposely made them just a little bit bluer to make them a little bit easier to work with outside. And uh, the uh, deep mo box that I've been testing recently is just um, a little bit warmer than my GOMOs, but pretty close. And that's what I used as the primary light source on this particular image. And one of the things I love about the uh, deep mo, uh, it's a deep parabolic um, octabox, not really an octabox, it's 16 sided, so whatever that would. <laughs> Whatever that would work out to be, I, I, I can't think of what a 16-sided uh, shape would be. I, I can't Google it right now. So it's a deep parabolic softbox. And what that does is it gets those light rays moving a little bit more in parallel lines and makes them more concentrated. What I like about that in that particular size is like it's soft yet punchy light. And I love that for headshots here. I don't know if you can see my cursor, but you got nice punchy but soft light on the face and then a fall off right where I would want to start the vignette. So I've got fall off down here on the jacket and I've got light where I want it. The background's being lit separately. That's that's with a speed light with a grid on it. Uh, so don't let that fool you. Don't let that let yourself think that that's from the uh, deep octa or the deep uh, parabolic. Um, it's not. The light on him is from the deep parabolic. I am using a fill light and one question I had on the forum yesterday was uh, my worry about double catch lights and honestly no um, most of the time I don't retouch them out and I'll show you why you can hardly see them because we're dealing with a strong um, key light that's much closer than my fill light my fill light is up high I have it up on a boom and you can see it kind of overlaps here so um, you know if if this were a model shot and a beauty shot, I would go in and probably get rid of that second catch light. Uh, right now, I don't care. <laughs> Honestly, I don't care. This is for a business headshot. I don't think it's distracting. What is a little distracting, and I will probably fix in retouching, is I am using an eye lighter underneath. And uh, where I had it originally positioned, I had it leaned forward a little bit. This is a little bit more straight up, and now it's, it's cutting into the pupil a little bit, and I'm seeing that. A little too much so I will probably soften that out or even just remove that that sharp corner there and um, you know I still like what the reflector is doing because it's softening shadows underneath the nose it's softening shadows underneath the chin but I still have definition there I still have nice highlight on our left viewer left to right side of his face over to shadow over here you can see a nice little kicker this is what again reason why I'm using so many lights guys key light to get the punch into his face fill light to help soften the shadows edge light over here to get separation, edge light over here to get separation, a little bit of hair light up here, and a background light. That's why I'm using all these different light sources, plus a reflector to help soften shadows up underneath here. That's how I'm getting this look. But let's talk about uh, what we do in Lightroom. So I just wanted to just kind of reset the scene for how we're lighting this and reason why, blah, blah, blah. But straight out of the camera, this is pretty dang close. Um, as you can see over here in exposure, I don't have to touch it. Um, my histogram up here to the right is uh, I've got just a little bit of block black down here. That's fine. I'm not blowing any highlights. I'm pushing up pretty close. That's the white of his shirt, man. We're dead on for exposure. And that's why you use a light meter. I pre-metered everything. I shot this at f6.3, and that's exactly what I metered to. And look at that. 
I don't have to change anything with exposure. Now, what I do do, <laughs> I said do do again, is I do apply a preset on import with all this stuff. So I do have a preset for my deep mo, uh, deep parabolic, and I'm going to show you what that looks like because here I'm going to click reset and this is how it would import is the, just the plain raw file. And it's lacking contrast, it's a little warm, it's a little magenta if you ask me as well, and that's straight out of the camera. I come over and I click on my deep mo studio headshot and boom. Now I'm in color. I've got the right color balance. Um, I've got the right tint. I took some of that magenta out. No change on exposure, no change on contrast here. I bring my blacks up about uh, plus five. My clarity's plus five. My vibrance is plus 10. My saturation is plus four. That's just where I've played and that's where my look is. Where I do bring some more contrast is down here in the tone curve. I go to a medium contrast. And then I also go plus two on the darks. As you can see, looking at my histogram, I'm not blocking up any of the details and the shadows where I need it, and I'm not blowing my highlights, and I got some nice pop. So let's just go reset, so you can see where it was, and we'll go back. Much better. And that's why it's important to use, um, use presets in Lightroom. You know, get them set for your uh, particular camera, get them set for your particular look. I'm also going to scroll down here and show you a few other things too. Um, this is based on how uh, my Canon 5D Mark III shoots. Uh, I do my own custom um, color beyond the white balance and stuff up here. The hue, I shift plus 11 from red into orange because I feel like the Canon cameras, the 5D Mark III specifically, shoots a little red. So I shift it a little bit warmer into the oranges. I also go into the saturation on the oranges and I take them down minus 12. Because as soon as you shift this orange, there's always a little, already, already a little orange in that file. I bring the saturation down minus 12. That's my kind of custom color mix for the Canon 5D Mark III. But as I look at this, um, it's set to go. I don't have to do anything in Lightroom. All I can do is go and export this out. <coughs> and that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go File, Export. And I'm going to put it in subfolder. I'm going to put it in the same folder as the original folder. I'm going to put it in a subfolder called Order. As far as file settings, I'm usually doing a JPEG sRGB because that's, you know, if we're going to print this, is what our labs are using. Could you do Adobe RGB? Yeah, as long as you've got an Adobe RGB workflow, it makes sense. I don't have an Adobe RGB workflow, I've got an sRGB workflow. Not going to go down that path on this particular video. Uh, quality, I've got anywhere from 90 to 93. I just like to have a nice high quality JPEG. I don't need 100. Uh, I don't resize the fit at this point. I export and it takes a second. And just waiting, 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 done. Awesome. So I can go to Photoshop. I can go open that up. That's the wrong folder. Let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go here, boom, boom. All right, so now we're into the retouching workflow. And I'm immediately going to make a duplicate of my file, or a duplicate of my layer, sorry. And I'm gonna zoom in tight, and I like to work blemishes and skin first. So I'm gonna to go to my uh, spot healing brush, and I'm just gonna go in, boom, 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 get rid of the little stuff that's just standing out a little bit of, a lot of guys have a little bit of scarring and stuff around here just from catching themselves with a razor blade too many times. He's got a little bit of razor stubble. It's there, you know. That's the way he looks. We could soften a little bit maybe in skin softening, but I'm not going to do a heck of a lot with that because that is actually his look. So I'm just getting rid of obvious blemishes. A few lines here and there. Things that just stand out and catch my eye. Moving quickly because time is money, folks. All right, looking pretty good overall. I'm gonna do a quick scan of his jacket. I'm not seeing big pieces of fluff. A little bit here, a little bit there, boom, done. All right, so that's the first part.
Next part is we're going to take care of the eye bags. Half a do dozen different ways of doing this. Um, I typically like to go to the patch tool on normal because it's just quick. And I'm just going to draw a circle. I'm going to drag it down. I'm going to go control shift. I'm on PC F. And I'm going to fade this back. And usually somewhere around 50, 60 percent. I want it to look, we don't want to take away all the depth, but we just want to take away a little bit of the bag. And it just depends on the person how deep of eye bags they have. I'm going to go right around 50% for him. And remember that because I'm going to come back here and do the other side. Just be careful not to be grabbing eyelashes when you do this. Control, control Shift F. Take it right into the 50-ish range. I'm just going to visually kind of compare them. Good. Awesome. He was concerned about crow's feet. We're going to do those separately. And similar kind of thing, about 50%. We're not getting rid of them entirely. We are just softening down a little bit. There you go. You can see the difference. Before, after, before, after. Awesome. I'm um, going to make a duplicate of that. I'm going to work on the eyes a little bit. And I am going to go in. There's a couple different ways we could do this. I'm just going to do this with the spot healing brush and see what happens. And just bring down. Eh, I'm not liking that. I'm going to go to the patch tool. And we can just kind of drag that up. There we go. That's a lot better. I'm going to have to clean that up a little bit with dodge and burn. But I just want to get rid of that edge. That edge is bugging me a little bit. All right. So do we clean up this? Yeah, we could do that. Get rid of the second catch light. All right. Pretty good overall. Get that edge a little bit. I want to fix that a little bit more with dodge and burn. He's got some yellow in his eyes. How do you get rid of that? Go to your brush tool. And we can go to color. Or we can go to lighten. I think I'm going to go color this time. And I'm going to go to hit 2 for 20%. I'm going to sample a cleaner white, which is going to be gray. There's no real white in the eye. And we're going to come in and we're just going to get rid of the yellow and some of the red that's in there too. You get rid of too much of that stuff and the eyes look really strange. I'm just going to get a nice clean color over on the other side here. And just paint, 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 paint. Paint, paint. Now if you got somebody that's got really bloodshot eyes, you can go in and get rid of this. I'm going to show you that very quickly. Um, I'm going to go up here instead of color. I'm going to go to lighten and I'm going to pick a brighter part of the eye and you can go in and it'll get rid of some of the veins. Don't want to go too far because then you're going to get really weird eyes. Matter of fact, I feel like that's a little too far. I might take that back just a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, it's not bad. We'll go with it. How's that? All right. Before, after. All right, so dodge and burn is one of the last things I do. I know I'm going to come back and work those eyes and dodge and burn. Uh, next thing I really want to do is I just want to lighten and brighten the teeth just a bit. And the shortcut for that is I come up to the lasso tool, or I use L. I usually want about a two-pixel feather on that, so I'm going to change that to two. And I'm just going to loosely draw a lasso around the teeth. I'm getting into the lips, and that's just fine because I'm going to come down to... Hang on. Yeah, I can't get the pull up right now. We'll come up here to layer, new adjustment layer. Go to hue saturation. Okay, I'm going to go in here instead of master, I'm going to go into the yellows and I'm going to desaturate the yellows. And there we still get a fairly natural tooth, but what we're doing is getting rid of the staining. So we're not shifting anything else. The teeth really aren't any brighter. If I want to go brighter, I can I can hit the lightness over here, but be very, very careful with that. I don't think I need it. I just need to take some of the color out of it, some of the staining. All right. Now that I've got an adjustment layer over here, I'm going to do what I call the claw because I want to take everything I've done so far and, and put it into a new layer. And on PC, it's Shift-Control-Alt-E. And what it does is it takes everything below and puts it into a new layer. Now, I can always go back and work on the other layers, get rid of this layer if I screw something up. But now I've got a new, fresh layer with all the work I've done so far composited above everything else. So we're going to zoom this back. Looking pretty good. Um, 
One other thing I'm going to do here, I've got a little bit of a bump on the shoulder line. I'm just going to quickly go into liquify, get myself the push tool, and just boom, done. Anything else we need? Nope, good, got it. Before and after. Anything that's kind of rumply or bumpy, it's one of the reasons why we like it when gentlemen wear a nice suit coat because it gives cleaner lines. Uh, I get people coming in with sweaters all the time and it just makes me crazy because everything's lumpy and bumpy. I don't like lumpy and bumpy. Um, okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little dodge and burn. Um, I've got that set up as a, as a hotkey. I do a new layer filled with 50% gray, shift to soft light blend mode, and then I go to my brush tool, make sure that I am on normal, and I paint with black to burn and white to dodge. And come back up into those eyes. I got this set at 20% opacity. And I'm just gonna bring these back. There we go. Nice. I might even go down to 10 here. And I just want to darken this down just a little bit. I just want to get that shape back in there. Same kind of thing in here. It's a little too bright. Take it to 20% just by hitting two. And let's just darken back into here. Now if I want to brighten the eyes, I hit X to switch over to white. I'm going to try this a little bit at 10% and just to brighten up the color here. Not a lot. Now if we want to put a nice little dark ring around the eyes, I go to a smaller brush, paint with black, and this helps set off the eyes a little bit more. Just, just putting a little darkness around the outer part of the iris. Pretty easy. There you go. Eyes are popping a little bit better, a little more cleaned up. Okay, these look pretty good. Um, final steps here would be, do we do any skin softening? Maybe a little bit and then do a crop. And I'll typically crop to a five by seven. Uh, that's what I promise all my uh, my clients is that we're going to deliver a five by seven file, which is going to be uh, 1500 pixels by 2100 pixels at 300 ppi. That's pixels per inch, not DPI. That's a whole different ball game. So um, a little bit of you know we could put a little bit of uh, skin softening on them. So we're going to do the claw again, combine everything up into a layer. I'm going to go to filter. I'm going to go to imaginomic portraiture. Generally what I'll do is just let it go to default. It's always going to be too much. I'm just going to say, okay. And then I'm going to do a couple of things. Wait for it to run. That's way too much. Way too much. He's plastic. All right. So first thing we do is take this down quite a bit. I don't want to lose all that texture. So I'm taking it down. I mean, we only got about 30% on this. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to layer mask this. And for some reason, oh, I can't get rid of this little bar down here. It's making me nuts. Uh, okay. So we're going to layer mask and we're going in. Or you know what I can do? I'm just going to quickly do this. You know what? I do cheating too. I'm going to go with the eraser tool. <laughs> yeah, you can use the eraser tool. And I'm just rather than layer masking it because for safety and and speed sake here I'm just going to take any softening off of the teeth and the eyes and the eyebrows and the eyelashes and usually just don't hit the edge of the nostrils there because we expect sharpness there I'm also going to come up to the hairline and just hit the hair and make sure that we've got sharpness there alright we're looking good that's your classic headshot. Um, somebody requires or needs or requests additional retouching beyond that, we will do it. But um, that's as far as we go. And actually, it took a lot longer to demonstrate it than it would take me to normally do it. So 